Good afternoon. This is Ward Harriman, AE6TY. In my previous video, I introduced version 18.0, which includes two optimizers. And in that video, I promised that I would do a follow-up video showing a little bit more about the optimizer specifically. There are two optimizers in version 18. One is Nelder Mead, which was there in 17, and another one which is called Differential Evolution, which is a little more controllable about the range of solutions that are allowed. Let's start out with Nelder Mead. It's a familiar one. It was in 17, and let's just bring it up. So in this case, I have an application, which is a T-matching circuit, and I want to match some arbitrary impedance here to a target of 50 ohms. When I initialize it and turn on the, the both, you'll see a path here, which is the impedance as transformed by the present values of these components. And if I sync it, do a single step, and we look down in here, this little shape here is called the simplex. It is the Nelder Mead internal database. And it's basically three points, and it's trying to use that to find the slope of the function in order to move towards the center. So I have a way to automate this. I'm going to turn the path back on. And let's start it and see what happens. You can see the simplex. You can see how it's trying to modify the values in order to get towards the center. There's a delay in this to make it run slow enough that you can watch it. Um, and as I showed earlier, regardless of how you, how many times you run this, it ends up with the same answer every time. It is a completely predictable algorithm. I can change the input impedance over here and it will, it will solve basically all of them, at least all the ones that I've tried. So that's Nelder Mead. Let's move on to differential evolution. Now, differential evolution is a little bit different than Nelder Mead in that you can specify the acceptable values of the components. So if left unrestricted, it, it does some variation around the present values. But in this case, I wanted to show how you could specify the acceptable range of values for each of the components. One of the big things about differential evolution is that you have to give it a large population in order for it to, to successfully explore the space. So I'm going to do a population of 200 and Let's let this run. Here you can see the initial set of members of the population. They tend to be grouped around here largely because there's these two capacitors which cause those arcs. There is some inductance here, but let's let it run and see what happens. You can see it's starting to get the idea that this is a better area to work in and it will start to abandon. It found an answer. Let's run it again and see what happens. Again, it runs differently each time, so sometimes you have to run it several times to see if you really like the answer. And of course, sometimes it takes longer and sometimes it's shorter. 
Okay, so there, found an answer. Let's see, 200 puff, 400 nano, and 450 puff. That's 200 puff is in this range, 450 nanos in this range, and 450 puff is in this range. So you can see that differential evolution found a solution within the given ranges. So there you go. Neldermead, fairly straightforward, predictable, repeatable, differential evolution, unpredictable, unrepeatable, but allows you to provide the ranges of components to uh, restrict the solution space. This is Ward Harriman, AE6TY. Thanks for watching, and thanks for using SimSmith.